Hi all, this is a game from last night. Barnet Chess Club were playing Wood Green Chess Club and um, congratulations to Wood Green for winning the North Circular League this season. Uh, Barnet got a bit of a hammering, this was the only win so we lost 5-1 and I was playing board 2 against Whitman who's about 183 ECF so two points less than me so quite um, a tough match. I played D4 and he played the Dutch defence. Now after my last game, which was a bit of a disaster, um, I haven't YouTubed, but uh, I didn't have any development in that game, it was quite uh, horrific, so if I wanted one thing out of the opening in this game, it was to have at least some pieces developed. So I thought I'd try the Staunton Gambit, so E4, just sacrificing a pawn, so named after Howard Staunton, who's the, um, who's the he, he designed the pieces which most modern, modern tournament chess sets use, but he also created this gambit against the Dutch defence, which um, is, is quite dangerous. I think what I played is getting to be uh, more off beats than bishop g5 here. I played f3 immediately, and after d5, now I played bishop g5. Maybe black's perfectly okay here with um, bishop f5. There's probably a lot of... Um, key games though to look at. It's been around a long time, this gambit. He played an interesting move, knight c6, and I thought I'd try and, um, you know, I didn't want him playing e5 later, and I didn't want him casting queenside. So my next move tries to discourage things uh, with the sort of threat of just doubling his pawns and playing positionally if necessary. He played bishop f5, and here I fought for quite a while that maybe, you know, f takes e4 is, is the right opportunity now. After the game we'd, we'd looked at quite a few variations and you know something like perhaps just knight e4 is okay. So knight takes, bishop takes and say knight f3 and you know white's got a little bit of pressure for the pawn um, but I think this is better than the game. In the game he played perhaps a bit too ambitiously with taking with the d-pawn because here d5 seems to be quite strong. He played a6 and probably expecting me to play d takes c which maybe is okay for black because after takes queen takes takes here a takes c takes rook b7 and black is probably going to end up being better if I'm not careful. Um, so, actually I found something more interesting than this. I played just bishop a4 and after b5 I snapped off the pawn with knight takes b5. So we have a very exciting position now. And here he played knight takes d5. I've been trying to sharpen my tactics recently with um, puzzles and Perhaps I treated it too much like a puzzle where something spectacular was needed because I, I, I just played here queen takes d5 um, because if queen takes d5 knight takes c7 check um, just uh, being a piece up. So I was quite excited by this and thought I was winning a piece actually but uh, I was wrong because actually after um, a takes b you know black's not losing a whole piece but let's just go back here in this position can you see something much stronger for white I'll give you five seconds five four three two one see Ribka just immediately finds knight d4 I think it's ECF would be very high if it was playing in these over the board games <laughs> knight d4 just seems to be winning a piece out of a clear blue sky because um, you know the attack piece is now adding further pressure to c6. What does black do here? Just loses this piece. So um, say this, bishop takes c6, this is a, a rip of variation. And um, queen takes d4. So if queen takes d4, knight takes c2. But just a3 here, so white's just a whole piece up here. So this would be just completely crushing out of the opening, 11 moves. So no, I didn't um, want a quick victory, I just played Queen takes d5 because I thought it was uh, winning a piece as well, but it's not. A takes b, and I've got a few choices now. Do I take the bishop? Do I take the knight? Do I take this pawn with the queen? If I take the queen with 
with the queen to take the knight, he's got bishop d7. So um, I don't think that's any good. See, so queen takes bishop d7, and black actually might be better according to Ribka. So let's say queen takes f5, uh, rook takes a4, and black's better, almost better according to Ribka, or no, about equal now at depth um, 9. What I played was actually queen takes b5. And he plays actually an exchange sacrifice now to try and relieve the pressure. Maybe he didn't want bishop d7 castles queen side then with rook takes d7. So he just played rook takes and then um, queen d5. Now if a casual move like knight e2, he's got queen c5 stopping me castling. And I don't like this bishop being sort of loose. So I played bishop e3 so I could later play rook d1. Uh, so Rupert gives clear advantage to white now. I am the exchange up. But he might have some um, play if I'm not careful. So rook d1 and now knight e2. But I'm happy to be able to just castle now. And I let him castle and I play knight g3 which is winning a pawn. After bishop g6 I play knight takes e4. Well first rook takes f8 to get the rooks off. Then knight takes e4. So I was hoping he'd play queen g4 here because then knight f6. So I'll show you that. Queen g4, knight f6. And the discovered a check on the queen, so check takes. I take the queen, but no, he played um, knight d4. I had a bit of a scare here. I thought I may have messed up because there's this like threat of skewering if I move like knight f2, bishop takes c2. So I have to find something more aggressive, which I I believe I did find. I played queen a8, which is um, Ripka's second choice. So the idea is now rook f1. So I, I'm using this pin on this bishop on f8. Play c6. And after rook f1, I've got a very good position again. Um, so here, um, actually, after rook f1, at move 22, he resigned. Um, he could play on a bit. Um, let's say queen there, bishop g5, queen e8, I could take, and then c3. I'm the exchange up here, and also a pawn. So in this position, I might even be winning another pawn. So in this kind of position, it's um, it's all over, I think. So just exchange up for pawn here still. Not bishop e7, bishop c4. It's just exchange up. It will be a, an easy win in the ending. So let's have a quick overview and summary. I played the Staunton Gambit. So using this ancient gambit, which has got tons of analysis. But after knight c6, a bit of an odd move. I play bishop b5. And was very, very pleased after FE that he played this D takes E4. But I missed this quick knockout now with um, after Knight takes D5 in this exciting position. Um, the pin on C6 needed to be celebrated to the maximum. I didn't realize that just Knight D4 it didn't even come into my head because I was just excited to be able to play Queen takes D5 here. So, uh, so sometimes calm down when you've got a good uh, possibility. Look for an even better one. You know, don't be too excited, the first thing you see. So, um, anyway, I managed um, to calm down his counterplay a bit and castle. And after this, knight g3 was good, just hitting this uh, bishop, threatening to win a piece here, actually, because um, if the queen ever moves off, then queen c takes c6. And then here, I was fortunate to find this rook queen a8 resource. Another possibility perhaps is knight g5 according to Ribka, and that's good as well. But uh, So I was pleased um, with this game. He resigned actually after uh, rook f1. So I hope you enjoyed that game and may consider playing this Staunton Gambit against the Dutch defence. It's an exciting gambit. It may not be completely sound, but um, it's been uh, around a long time. Thanks very much, and please leave your comments on YouTube.